Hi, I'm Tom Stoltman, the world's strongest man, and I've got autism. For those of you who don't know what autism is, there's a lot of kids and adults who are affected by this in different ways. Signs of autism can be invisible and visible. So autism has been uh, very challenging for myself from a young age all the way up to, to now. Through school, I would have my hood up, I would be fidgeting with my hands, be shaking my legs, would never talk to anybody. I would only be comfortable around my family, especially my mum and one of my big sisters. Those two are the people that I would go to for anything. Everything for me was challenging. Social skills, you know, my friends were 10, 11, 12, 13 years old and I felt I had the social skills of maybe nine, 10 year old when, you know, I was 12, 13 year old. Um, I couldn't go on buses myself, couldn't go on any transport myself, um, couldn't sleep over at my friend's house till I was maybe 15, 16 years old. And this was all due, due, due to the autism and like the, I think just the fear that if I slept over at my friend's house, I was feeling that my mum wasn't going to pick me up. Uh, I wouldn't be able to phone my mum, etc., etc. A lot of things were going through my head. I also suffered a lot with when my brother and dad went away offshore. I would be phoning them all the time saying, you know, why are you not home? If Luke said he was going to be home at 7 p.m. and he, was home at ha and he wasn't home at 7 p.m., sorry, I would be phoning saying, where are you? That's when I would break down. A lot of these things really affected me because it made me feel a wee bit different because obviously my other siblings were like, you know, oh, dad's 10 minutes late, doesn't matter about that. But I'm really, I really, really got overwhelmed. And I think my autism was really, really bad at these kinds of times when um, plans changed. That was a massive thing for me as well. So if school all of a sudden said they were going on a school trip uh, with a 24 hour notice, that would kick me off and I would, wouldn't go to school the next day. Change the teacher. If there was, my teacher was off and I had a supply teacher, again, I wouldn't be able to go to school there. If there was work was too hard, I would just get emotional or overwhelmed, phone my mum to come pick me up. And these are the things that uh, for other kids would, they would just be like, oh, this is too hard and ask the teacher. But for me, I thought it was the end of the world. I thought all oh, the teacher's gonna give me a row, would go mental at me and it would be the yeah, end of the world for me. And out of school as well, like I still say, social skills for me was the worst. Uh, shape my leg a lot, fidget a lot. Head would always be down and my hood would always be up. That's how I lived my life. I would never talk to anybody. If someone was talking to my mum, they would say, hi, Tom, I would just ignore them. And I think, again, a lot of people would think I'm rude, but that's just with the autism, you know, this social anxiety as well with that all. Um, you know, I just thought I wasn't a kind of normal member of society. I thought, no, this is different, but this is how I lived and this is how I thought you were meant to live. You know, someone with autism, the way I was living was right and I thought everybody else living their way was wrong. If you could give your younger self uh, an advice on maybe dealing with autism for those younger audience out there, what would you say? Yeah, so if I could give myself some uh, advice with dealing with autism when I was younger, I mean, for me, there's not, that you can give yourself advice, but it's how you, people with autism live their life the way their brain works and like I said, everyone with autism is different. Uh, I suffer differently than the next person. Next person suffer differently than the next. And, uh, you know, I live my life the way I thought was normal. The way I seen life was, or the way my brain seen life was how we, I thought it was normal. So I could never really sit back and say, oh, I could change this day, time when I was 12, 13 years old, because like I said, that's just how I, uh, how I knew life. But I think, if I was to look back a wee bit is, you know, it would be, well, I wouldn't really change anything, but I would be like, I would try and put myself in more challenging situations, which my mum and dad did, but, um, so uh, being out of your comfort zone. Yeah, being out, yeah, being out of my comfort zone would probably be a good, because obviously like, for me, I think what suffered the most was like, the spend, not spending time with my friends after school because of my aut autism. And when I was younger, I used to just cry about it and not really do much about it. And uh, I think if I got pushed a wee bit to say, look, it's your friends, you're, they're not going to do anything to you, try and stay a night and see what happens. If I got pushed a bit more or even tried myself to stay over, I think my social skills would have been a bit better as well. And, you know, if I tried to maybe go on transport a bit earlier, not just get on a train and because I was by myself, freak out. Yeah, I look back on my life, I would never change it, but I just kind of, 
you know, when I was younger with autism, I was just like a normal kid playing around. But then as school came, you know, maybe, maybe not me changing. I think the schools and stuff could have maybe changed how they supported me. Because again, that can affect somebody with autism is when you're going through the education system, it's how you're treated in school for me as well as how you your life can kind of get dependent on. Um, so, you know, if my school, if the secondary school said, oh, we'll do, get Tom support from the first day he's in here to the last day he leaves, my uh, secondary school life could have been much better. I could have maybe been on a train quicker. I could have maybe sleep over my friends quicker. But I think, yes, yeah, for myself, it's maybe pushing a bit into uh, situations that I didn't want to be in, but then also maybe having more support from... Uh, the people outside your family would really help someone with autism as a child to really kind of blossom and, you know, get to where they want to be in life. So. School and the education system for autism is not the best, it's even to now, even right now, I've, I've talked to a lot of parents that, you know, I thought oh, the education system had changed, but they still say it's the same. And, you know, pe kids don't get that opportunities to like be able to, uh, blossom in schools and they really get isolated with the t what teachers say and they get isolated what their kid their classmates say or their friends say and you know like if an autistic kid says he wants to be a professional footballer let him ride that dream out you know and Expand expanding on that um what do you think others can do or teachers can do to help people with autism or what would you what kind of help would you have like when, when you were yeah i mean i had i had help uh, you know teachers <laughs> The school system for me is just, I still think, don't, not really clued up in it all. I think it's because, like I said as well, autism's invisible sometimes. You need to have a lot of proof with the to get your kid the help you need in school, which for me is bang out of order. If, if the professional says Tom Stockman is autism, then that should lead then to your schools helping you and then blah, blah, this, blah, blah, that, and really open passing to you. But the schools still kind of, for me, go, go down the wrong way. Even if I got help in school, I didn't get helpful for two or three years after, or maybe two years after into school. So that was the first year in school. I was just like in a shadow. I wasn't there. The teachers didn't really know how to deal with me. They didn't know what to do with me. Even the head teachers, none of them even bothered to kind of study autism or maybe give me a wee bit of help. So it was my mum and dad and the social workers that had to go into the school and said, look, this is what Tom's got, this is what he needs, and you're doing it, you know? And for me, for people to do that, it's still, still to this day, people have to do that, you know? Like I said, there's a few p kids that I know that have been going through the diagnosis treatment for seven to eight years, which is mind boggling. Other countries are doing it in three to four months. So for UK to take seven to eight years to diagnose your kid with autism is ridiculous in my eyes. And that can be, that can, you know, that could change a person's life. You know, if a wee kid at seven years old takes till 15 years old to get diagnosed, in that time of that diagnosis, that could really change your life to the worst instead of positive. So, yeah, for me, it's, yeah, the education system, I don't think we'll ever be good about it. You know, I'm not scared to talk about it because I've got autism. I've experienced what it is like to be in school. I've heard what teachers have said to me. I know hands-on what yeah like i said what the experience is like so you think in a way it's like it was because people were also like not believing that you had autism yeah i mean yeah like i said yeah, like i said if you look at me a lot of people don't think i have autism even when i was a, even when i was in school a lot of people wouldn't have thought i had autism i think a lot of people just thought i was a shy a really shy guy and you know i wasn't i didn't talk to people because of the the shyness crippled me you know a lot of people just thought Wow, Tom, you're so shy, you know, just talk to people. And again, that can hurt some of autism as well, because like in their head is that like, I'm not shy. I just physically can't do it. So yeah, and I think teachers as well maybe thought, you know, Tom's just a shy guy or he just has, he's really emotional and stuff. And again, you know, the, a lot of people judged, judged me without even, you know, going into debt or even asking my parents, you know, or asking my support teacher, asking my social worker, what can we do to help Tom, you know, he, and so it's a really, really hard time going through school. And especially, like I said, when teachers say something to a kid with autism, like, this is the only way you can learn. This is the only way, if you get this, the only way you're going to succeed, see in light, if you get this grade, this grade, and this grade. And if the autistic kid doesn't get those grades, 
that could ruin their life because of what the teacher said. And that's a really bad thing to go to leave school with. It's like, wow, I've just failed all three subjects that I was meant to get a B in, and now I can't live my life, which, which, which you can because I failed every single subject I did in school uh, miserably. And I kind of was like, you know, what is there to do? I went to college, dropped out of college, did work, dropped out of work, and now I'm here, you know, the world's strongest man and owning my own business. So there's a lot of things you can do. And I think that's what I'm trying to get out of people with like autism and adults that don't really know what to do for their kids is let their kid, you know, dream of being whatever they want. If that's a, being a Marvel superhero in a movie to, you know, being a doctor, let them achieve it or let them dream it and help them along the way. And then don't say ever say you're never going to get that or you're never going to do this. Just if they want to go to an actor's camp, whatever, let take, put them to it. If they want to keep fulfilling their dream, let them do it and then like I said, until they either not want to do that or they can't succeed at it, they'll, they'll, they'll be proud and happy that they tried it themselves. And you know, that's what I did with football. You know, I, my mum and dad paid everything for me to play, be a footballer. It didn't succeed for me. Got a bit depressed and found the gym and now look at myself. So yeah, it's, I think having your own good support system around you, good people around you, and just people that don't judge you and let you live your life like a normal person are the best kind of people to have around you. Finally, is there anyone you'd like to thank or what you'd like to say to the fans? Like, Yeah, I mean, I just, oh, I've always wanted to be, I always want to be uh, real with my autism and real with sharing autism, you know. Um, I've been vulnerable, still I'm vulnerable, but just because I'm the world's strongest man, you know, I've got a business and stuff, doesn't mean I suffer and I always do suffer. I suffer every single day. Like I said, autism is lifelong. Although sometimes, you know, you'll feel happy, you'll feel sad, there's, uh, sorry, you'll feel happy, you'll feel good. There's always that wee bit in your mind that may just, you know, trigger you off and stuff. And it does that. Every single day I kind of struggle with it, but I've learned, like I said, I learned to kind of control it. I learned to switch off from it. But um, big thank you, like, you know, who has brought me up with autism is my parents and my family. They've known me since I've been born. They've helped me through my childhood, my teenage years, my journey with straw man. They've helped me through life and everything like that. So big much to my family. Also the wife as well, Sinead. If, you know, I proved a lot of people wrong with getting married at 21 years old, moving out my mum and dad's house. And again, a lot of people with these additional needs or autism, that's the last thing they'll do is, they'll be really scared for independent. I wanted my independent, especially meeting a girl. You know, I'm not wanting to hide behind my mum and dad all, all every single year or all my, sorry, the rest of my life. I've got a girlfriend, I need to provide for her and give her the best life. So that's what I did, you know. So I changed myself for Shade as well and I thank her because she's she was really mature for her age when I met her. She was kind of, she was independent. She was cooking her own food. She was going out places herself. So I was like, wow, this is a wake up call for me because the first I went was like Tain Dingle way and she was going up to Inverness, Glasgow. I was like, this is a shot. But she pushed me and helped me as well, just like my mum and dad did and my family and then fans as well, you know. I've got loyal fans, a lot of fans that, uh, I know a lot of fans that watch this is, have autism or are going through that process of being diagnosed with autism. Just, you know, keep going, keep being positive and get the people out of your life that are negative. The negativity is what makes your autism go from here to here. It's uh, going from, you know, you can control it to then it's out, out of control, you know, then it's the people that say those wrong words or the people say you can't do this, can't do that, or you're different or you've got a dis disability when it's not a disability. You've got stuff like this, which, you know, like I said, it's really nasty things to say. So have a support base that you're comfortable with, have your family and have the best people around you and you will succeed in your life. And one more thing, autism is your superpower.